Today is August 31st, and this is UFO Update. Folks, UFOs are real, burgeoning, and not going away. I've been following this, I've been researching it, I've been studying it literally for decades, before I was a Christian. Um, I got serious about it, really serious about it, and started to write about it circa 1990, right around in that area. And of course, that led to the first book uh, of the Nephilim trilogy published by Zondervan. So I have been deeply immersed in all things UFOs. I've seen three. I've seen three of them. And it's just amazing how now um, it's just coming out and, and uh, we'll get into that and so much more. But first, a word from our sponsor, Bastion. Do you remember how Facebook went down in October of 2021? And not just Facebook, but many websites around the world were down for hours. Folks, I remember that. And, you know, it's, that's how we make our living on the net. And when that goes down, you know, people don't buy books and DVDs. And anyway, I digress. That is how easy it is to shut down access to websites. There was another internet outage in Canada just recently where people could not even use debit cards. I remember that also. But internet may still be working. It's the domain names that do not work. This is why you cannot rely only on old school internet websites. You will simply be cut off from information during a societal collapse or an emergency. Thankfully, there is now a social media platform called Bastion that does not depend on legacy internet. I am active on Bastion. We just started this, and I ask that you would go, just go check it out. You'll see it right there. You can see it in front of you. It's under Marzuli. So now you can follow me there. You can download their app through a link below this video. It works like Bitcoin, speaking to computers around the world. So you can never be blocked from seeing me and other bloggers other people who create content, as long as basic internet is running. Bastion is anonymous, even has Tor network built in, so there's no need for a VPN. You can just follow me there. Bastion devs announced that any followers who comments my videos on Bastion at least twice will get a gift of two pocket coin automatically on their Bastion profile. So this is pretty cool. That means, you know, you're, you're earning money. Get the link below and be free from centralized internet. Let me show you how easy it is to register. Once you download the app and install it, select sign up. You will simply create a nickname. Mine, of course, is Marzuli. No personal information is required. You can add an avatar to your profile. You will get a special private key, and it's really long. So you want to copy that and put it in your notes. This is your login and password all in one. You have to write down or copy it and put it in notes or whatever, but you have to write down this private key. Don't show it to anyone. It cannot be recovered if lost. So folks, I'm on Bastion now, um, just in case the unthinkable happens. We've stopped doing PPS report, and this is why we uh, have another, another site, and we're excited about that, and you can just go follow me right over there and uh, never miss another show. So follow me over to Bastion.com. That's Bastion.com. So this is, of course, from, um, <laughs> this is a billboard, right? Something not from this world, USS Nimitz pilot David Fravor. That was the first rung of a disclosure ladder. It's in our films, UFO uh, Disclosure Part 1 and Part 2. I, I go over all this in depth. The films are free. If you open up the text box right below here, guess what? There they are. There are the links. Open up a text box right below this video, and you can watch them all for free. And you can see that we're on basically now about the 10th rung of the ladder of disclosure, as I so fondly call it, or not so fondly call it. But something is happening, and this is a billboard, and it's right near the Jesse Marcel Jr., or I'm sorry, Jesse Marcel Sr. Museum. And I'll be talking about that um, as time goes on here, because... That's what we're going to really uh, do, sort of do a, not a total deep dive, but we are going to get into it. Because this man that you can see here, Jesse Marcel Sr., this man told us the truth in 1978, but many in our world still refuse to believe it. For those of you who don't know, 
1947, something crashed outside the town of Roswell, New Mexico. Um, immediately, it was, and I'll get into this right here, and I'll, this, of course, is a facsimile, but there it is. You know, you can see it for yourself, Roswell crash, there it is. And I'll be reading from this paper, and, and, and we'll walk through it. Why am I saying this? Because it's important, because they have been lying, in my opinion. They have been lying, the powers that be, the deep state, whatever you want to call them, have been lying about Roswell for decades. We talk about this in depth in part two of our UFO film series. Part three is, is, a, is like that close to being released. We'll be doing a pre-sale on that, but I digress. So in 47, the crash happened, all right? And the whole thing was buried. Um, Marcel became the patsy, became the fall guy. But in my book, UFO Disclosure, I sat down with Jesse Marcel Jr. Guess what? Marcel Jr., right on the record, comes on the record and says that as a boy, he handled the wreckage. His father bought the wreckage, some of the wreckage home, in a box, set it up on the kitchen table, and showed it to, the, to his wife and his son and said, what you're seeing, you may never see again. It's from something not of this world. Well, let's go back here. What is David Fravor telling us about the tic-tac-shaped UFO that he saw? Something not from this world. Gee, where have I heard that before, right? So let's read this. This man told us, Jesse Marcel Sr., the truth in 1978, but many in our world still refuse to believe it. This is Major Jesse A. Marcel Sr. It was he who collected the debris from the crash site of an extraterrestrial UFO outside of Roswell, New Mexico, in July of 47, 1947. He informed our world of this new reality through an interview he conducted with the grandfather of ufology, Stanton Freeman. And Stanton Freeman went after this. And we owe a great depth to him. He's no longer with us. But he was the guy that did the interview that busted all this open because the story had laid dormant literally for decades. So in 1978, he came on the record with Dr. Stanton Freeman. Major Marcel explained that he personally collected the debris from a crashed UFO, not of this earth, in July 1947. He dutifully returned those highly coveted materials to his commanding officers at what was then called Walker Army Airfield and under orders continued to cooperate in an imposed cover-up of that event for over 30 years until his conscience could no longer abide him holding back the truth. We have honored his legacy through the establishment of the Jesse Marcel Library. I will be visiting that. It is on the bucket list. It's a must-see. So before I get into that, and I, I, here's, here's one of the... Huh, it's just amazing. Burbank porch camera caught a UFO mid-flight. Look, it's out of the bag. It's in all forms of media. So what is it that we're looking at, and who do you want to believe? Do you want to believe someone that comes from a biblical perspective and has been for literally decades, for years, talking about this? I, and I was on a show a couple of days ago. Whoops. I was on a show a couple of days ago, and... And I said, I've been ridiculed, ostracized. I was kicked out of my last church. I was assistant pastor, music director there because of what I believed, because I was warning the church even then. And this is 15 years ago or more, the last church I was in. And it's, it's, it's all good. The Lord had, it was like Joseph being sold to Egypt because that catapulted me full time into what I'm doing now. I thank God for that. I thank God for that. But I have been warning of the coming great deception for decades for decades. So who do you want to believe? Some guy that's a Johnny come lately on Fox News that's going to tell you on about all about UFOs or someone that's been immersed from it in it, I should say, immersed in it from a biblical perspective. I choose the latter, but of course I'm completely biased. So let's move on here. And before I do that, I'm going to read this um, from again, this is the Roswell Daily Record. It's obviously a facsimile. I wish I had the real one. You can see it. This is when it, this is when the news broke. The RAAF captures flying saucer on ranch in Roswell region. So this is this is what I want to read. And there are well-meaning people in so-called Christian ufology who insist even now that the Roswell crash was nothing more than a weather balloon. Have they ever sat down with Dr. Jesse Marcel Jr.? I don't think so. So who's telling the truth? You tell me. Someone who was under ridicule for basically 30 years, as Marcel Sr. was, and his entire family, and you should read this, it's in the book. 
You should read the testimony. It's incredible. What they went under, it was an incredible stress. They were ridiculed. They were ostracized. To think that, Doc, that Jesse Marcel Sr. would mistake a weather balloon for a crashed UFO is patently and literally absurd in every possible way. Marcel Sr. handled weather balloons on a daily basis. They were putting them up. We talk about all of this uh, in, in our films. So it's a canard. It's a managed agenda to steer people away from the truth. And I would just say this, and some of these folks who believe that it's a weather balloon are not here to defend their position, but um, it, it wasn't. And how do I know that? Okay, this is as close to the event as you can get. Tuesday, other than, other than Dr. Jesse Marcel Jr., who actually handled the wreckage. So what was he smoking at 11 or 12 years old? He wasn't smoking anything. Why would his father wake them up at 2 o'clock in the morning? Okay, let's read this. Here we go. The intelligence office of the 509th bomb, um, Bombardment Group at the Roswell Army Airfield announced at noon today that the field has come into possession of a flying saucer. I guess they're just lying. They were, they were all misinformed, weren't they? Let's continue. According to information released by the Department uh, over authority of Major Jess, Jesse A. Marcel, intelligence officer, but this was recovered on the ranch in the Roswell vicinity after an unidentified rancher, that was Mac Brazel, had notified Sheriff George Wilcox here that he had found the instrument on his premises. Major Marcel, in a detail from his department, went to the ranch and recovered the disc. It was stated. After the intelligence office here had inspected the instrument, it was flown to higher headquarters. Let's just, let's just have that sink in. So where does this information come from? Well, it comes from the intelligence officer, Major Jesse Marcel, Sr. So let's continue. Um, after the inspection, it went to higher headquarters. Gee, I wonder where that was. Right, Pat, anyone? The intelligence office stated that no details of a saucer's construction or its appearance had been revealed. Mr. and Mrs., this is where it gets really interesting. Mr. and Mrs. Dan Wilmot apparently were the only persons in Roswell who have seen what they thought was a flying disc. So now are they lying? Are they lying? Listen to their testimony. Does this sound like a weather balloon crashing to you? They were sitting on their porch at 105 South Penn Street last Wednesday night at about 10 minutes before 10 o'clock when a large glowing object zoomed out of the sky from the southwest going in a northwesterly direction at a high rate of speed. Okay, stop right there. <laughs> I mean, the weather balloon story just collapses. It falls of its own weight. Why? Because weather balloons don't go flying across the desert, desert as glowing objects at a high rate of speed. They just don't do that. Hmm. Wilmot called Mrs. Wilmot's attention to it, and both ran down into the yard to watch. It was in sight less than a minute, perhaps 40 to 50 seconds. Wilmot estimated. So Mr. Wilmot is out there. They're both looking at this thing. Wilmot said that it appeared to him to be about 1,500 feet high and going very fast. He estimated between four and 500 miles per hour. So that's definitely not a weather balloon. In appearance, it looked oval shaped like two inverted saucers. I mean, how do you refute this? These are eyewitnesses to the event. They're just making this up? How can they possibly confuse a weather balloon with a disc-shaped saucer-like object? Yeah, Wilmot said that it appeared to him to be about 1,500 feet in high and going very fast, but going fast. He estimated between four and 500 miles an hour. In appearance, it looked oval in shape, like two inverted saucers faced mouth to mouth, or like two old-type wash bowls placed together in the same fashion. It, let me stop there. I mean, these are definitive descriptions of something moving at four or 500 miles an hour, which in my opinion is a smoking gun. Is the man a trained witness? As some people would say, well, maybe he is a trained witness. Why? Because he's giving us a lot of detail. He's estimating the height at 1,500 feet. He's looking at it between you know, 40 and 50 seconds. He realizes that it's going four or 500 miles an hour. Who do you want to believe? 
the, the so-called Christian ufologists who tell us, insist that Roswell was a weather balloon, what are they hiding? Who are they in collusion with? One has to ask themselves. And why do they insist it was a weather balloon when all the preponderance of evidence points to something completely different? Let me continue. Um, it is obviously, oh, I'm sorry, hold on. The entire body glowed as the light were showing through from the inside, though not like it would be if a light were merely underneath. So this thing is glowing. Let me show you something right, right there. That might have been, that's artists, it's CGI, but that's, that may be what they, what they saw. That fits the description. From where he stood, Wilmont said that the object looked to be about five feet in size, and making allowance for the distance it was from town, he figured that it must have been 15 or 20 feet in diameter, though this was just a guess. Wilmont said that he heard no sound, but that Mrs. Wilmot said she heard a swishing sound for a very short time. The object came into view from the southeast and disappeared over the treetops in the general vicinity of Six Mile Hill. Wilmot, who was one of the most respected and reliable citizens in town, kept the story to himself, hoping that someone else would come out and tell about having seen one, but finally today decided that he would go ahead and tell about seeing it. The announcement that the RAAF was in possession of one came only a few minutes after he had decided to release the details of what he had seen. So he's not, he, he released this before, before the intelligence officer, Major Marcel, released it to the public. He came out and said it. I'm going to read this again. Wilmot, who was one of the most respected and reliable citizens in town, kept the story to himself. Folks, who do you want to believe? Who do you want to believe? And now all of a sudden, let's roll back here. Now all of a sudden, first rung on the disclosure ladder, Commander David Fravor says that what he's looking at with the tic-tac-shaped object is not of this world. What do you do with that? For crying out loud, UFOs are real, burgeoning, and not going away. So this leads us to this. U.S. lawmakers believe some unidentified aerial phenomena, commonly referred to as UFOs, may not be man-made. Young Pentagon officials are treating UAP sightings with increased seriousness for their potential risk to U.S. national security. Oh, my God. So I want to talk about this because this is something that, that um, those of us in the UFO community and have been banging this drum literally for decades um, have been talking about. And uh, next Wednesday, I'm going to lead out here a little bit before I break into this. I will be talking about the coming great deception in, in, in depth, in depth, because we need to understand that, and I'll just sort of tease you with this. There are people saying that the old gods are about to return, and I concur in part, but what they're not saying is how the old gods will return. And the old gods... Um, are basically nothing more than fallen angelic hosts, in my opinion. And they're everywhere. They permeate the entire globe. How are they going to come back? See this right here? This is how they're going to come back. And we've heard this. I've heard this for 50 years. Before I was a Christian, in my 20s, I heard that when they showed up, Muhammad, Buddha, Jesus, Krishna, Confucius would all come waltzing out, and, and others of the discs of the UFOs. Hi, we're here. But I digress. So anti-gravity lift. These are the five observables. Let's walk through it. So what we see here is no rotor wash, which Commander David Favor said. There's, there's no exhaust, no rotor wash, nothing. There's just anti-gravity. Whatever these craft are, whatever um, makes them move, and of course this is the work of Bob Lazar, uh, Area 51, but Lazar saw the so-called sports model. I always believe Lazar. We talk about this in episode two of UFO Disclosure. You need to watch it. It's a free film, folks. What are you waiting for? Open the text box below. Click the free link. It's there. Okay? So there's, there's your anti-gravity. And element 117 that Lazar talks about, um, it's a gravity wave. And he worked on the propulsion system, which essentially, according to Lazar, was a gravity wave. So if this is the craft, and let me, let me just get a prop here. Let's say this is the craft. So this gravity wave is just pulling the craft. So it can make right angle turns. In other words, 
the, the gravity wave is bending space time as we know it. And that's why there are no G-forces. That's why the craft can make right angle turns, because it's a gravity wave and the craft essentially is now outside of gravity. So all that, all those physics that we have to figure into our jets and propulsion systems go right out the window. So that's the first observable. The second one is UFOs reach unbelievable speeds. In episode number three of our ongoing UFO series, and maybe I'll tease you with that clip next week if someone reminds me, if you really want to see it, I'll show it to you. I, I sat down with an octogenarian several years ago at a conference, and I asked this man to tell me his story. And he comes on the record and he tells me a story of a friend of his who was employed by the CIA to fly the SR-71 Blackbird. That plane is, it, it flies faster than Mach 3. How fast is that? It's literally faster than a speeding bullet. It's really fast. So he's flying along like this and a UFO comes up on his wing and paces him like this. And I'll, maybe I'll show that next week. And then, so they're doing Mach 3 and the UFO just goes boom like that and it's gone. Commander David Favor said that when the thing sped away from him, like a bullet out of a gun. How is it doing that? Once again, here's my prop. It's doing it this way. Here's the craft, there's the gravity wave, and off it goes, like that, into the sunset at a very high rate of speed. Uh, you, many UFOs goes from standing still to vanishing in the distance in seconds. And we've had, we've had person after person after person, witnesses, people that I've interviewed, this is exactly what we see. So the other one is many people who claim UFOs use cloaking technology. You'll hear in part three about a gentleman, uh, two gentlemen actually, one who is watching the UFO go into a cloud and it never comes out. It just goes into a cloud and never comes out. Another gentleman watches it go behind a tree and it's like hovering here. Part of it, he can still see the part on this side of the tree. On the other side of the tree, no UFO. How is it possible that it can do that? And that's where we are. Uh, is there a connection between UFOs and water? Absolutely. We know that these things can travel underwater at a high rate of speed. Why? Because once again, it's bending space time. And that's why there's no friction. So um, this came in from a man by the name of Gordon Barrett. LA, I just watched UFO Disclosure for the second time. Thank you very much for all you have done in life. You are a bastion of Christianity. God bless you. You know, when I get things like that, it makes all this work worthwhile because we're arming the body of Christ, of the Messiah, of the Anointed One. We are warning you. How many people are out there, really, in the body of Christ who've been talking about this for decades? There's a handful of us because God's not going to just give us to one person. But I've been on this like white on rice for decades. In fact, out of the 13 books that I've written, there's always a part, either the book is about UFOs or I refer to UFOs. Because this is the coming great deception of a Luciferian endgame. Because when they show up, it changes absolutely everything. It will, if, it, look, if your loved ones are here, they'll believe a lie. Why? Because God tells us this. He sends them strong illusion because they did not believe the truth. What is the truth? That Jesus spoke in everything into existence. The beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were made by him, and without him was not made anything that was made. We can believe that. Oh, that's just a bunch of hooey, LA. Hey, it's in the Bible. We can't trust the Bible. It was rewritten, you know, thousands of times. Nonsense. Total nonsense. That's a canard. That's a lie. Scripture is the inerrant word of God. It's there. And we either believe that Jesus spoke everything into existence, which I believe with all my heart, mind, body, and soul. Or you can believe in the Darwinian paradigm, where somehow magically over billions of years, um, <laughs> mankind evolved. Nonsense. Total nonsense. But that's where we are. When they show up, they will tell us, that, we, that they, E.T., created all life on this planet, that they genetically manipulated early man, that they jump-started the world's civilizations and religions. And now, at this critical juncture in human history, E.T., our space brothers, our true progenitors, are back to usher mankind into a golden age. Just remember this. I'm the guy, right, that, that 22 years ago came out with the book Nephilim. That was the first book in the Nephilim trilogy. And in that, we talked about UFOs. That's the whole book is about and how it goes back into the giants, into the Nephilim. Because what remember, Jesus said it'll be like the days of Noah when he returns. Folks, 
We're here. We're here and it's happening right in front of our eyes. And the church, unfortunately, for the most part, is asleep. But I've been banging this drum for decades. It is the coming great deception. And don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. This is number three, part three in our UFO disclosure series. Um, it, I think I'm going to change the, the title to Close Encounters because that's exactly what this is. People were levitated. People have had UFO brain fog. The stories are riveting. There was a UFO the day of the fire which burned us out right over my house. You tell me why. Anyway, folks, thanks so much for watching. But before I go, September 16th to the 18th, Dark Secrets and Bright Hopes up in Yuba, City, California, Church of Glad Tidings. Derek Gilbert will be joining me, Dr. Brian Artis, and of course, Pastor Dave Bryan. I'm not sure how many times I'm speaking. Uh, it's at least, sorry about that. It's at least, uh, at least twice, possibly three times. I've got oodles of information. I will be going over the UFO phenomenon in great depth from Genesis 3.15, talking about the seed war and how it relates to us with ancient biblical prophetic texts, which are now manifesting right in our world. Here's something to, to sink your teeth into. I believe this is a construct. Uh, but it's it's getting some legs on Twitter and other places. And, and, and of course, uh, the author of, of this, what I believe is a total canard, is telling us, allegedly, this came out of the Vatican. Ooh, of course. So we see some some figures. It looks very old, like, like the 1870s or in the 1880s, right after photography. And we see craft flying in the sky, which, of course, shouldn't be there in some pyramidal-like object. And there's other other um, pictures, and I'll show you those uh, next week. If you um, have any information on that, please shoot me an email. Uh, maybe you can chase it down. But uh, I think it's a canard, but I'm throwing it up here as a warning to all of us. Anyway, folks, thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Hit the little subscribe button on the bottom. Thank you for your patronage. Thank you for going to our site, lamarzuli.net, and you can see everything that's there. Also, streaming lamarzuli.net streaming like a stream streaming.lamarzuli.net download everything instant gratification of course once again the ufo films are free the first two number three we're going to be charging but you can open up the text box below and you can watch them for free and i pray to god that you would do that the information is riveting and it's important because it's happening now not because la marzulli says so because your government and all media is talking about this now all the time. Congress has declared UAPs a possible threat. Ooh, scary stuff. So that's what's going on. That's what's going on. And I just thank you uh, for your patronage. You can also go to On the Trail with LA and, uh, and download uh, the DVDs there. I will be going to Israel in 2023. There's also information on the website about that. Uh, more, and it's a strictly a Nephilim tour. That's what it will be. We talked about Tel Gezer yesterday. I'll be concluding that message tomorrow with another episode of On the Trail of the Nephilim. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, UFOs are real, burgeoning, and not going away.